Do I want to approve the yeah. minutes of May, um, April 24th? I went through them, they looked good to me. If anybody has any changes or feedback on them. So I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 24th. There's no other discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And on to the um, 3.1, which is the annual financial management questionnaire. So I can help you with that if you'd like. Sure. I've seen it once. Yep. Definitely. More than once you have. <laughs> If you can pass that, Julie, to Vera. Mm -hmm. the, in 2012 or 2013, the legislature passed an act that required that all schools and the auditors, the, um, agency, the auditors agency, uh, the department <coughs> agency, um, asked that we self-assess where we are with procedures, accounting procedures, and required us to have a discussion with the board about that. The form that you have in your packet is one that we've had for, it, the answers to that form haven't changed for at least three or four years. Lori does a great job in her team in the financial management. This, our self-assessment goes to our auditors, who if there was something wrong would report it back to you through the audit, which you haven't heard anything on that. You haven't had any, your audits haven't had any findings or uh, exceptions, so we, I think we're doing everything we need to do the way it's been. Um, so this is one of those things we're required to do. You're required to have a discussion in your meeting. You do not need to take a motion. Veer's just saying that we did have this discussion and that you had a chance to ask us any questions about how we may have answered any of those questions. So I'd be glad to answer anything for you. This is, so this is a self-assessment? It's a self-assessment. Our auditors will check that with their, because they do a, they do a sample audit. They don't do a detailed audit. Mm -hmm. And then the answer would change based on what? Really what they're looking for is that Vermont has, if not the highest, one of the highest rates of embezzlement in public and private in the nation. Rates. Oh. Rates. And it's because we're such a small state. Interesting. So this was started as a result of that around 2012, 2013. So the auditor could come in and say, hey, you know, one of the questions is, does someone other than this treasurer review the bank re reconciliation? Well, right. yes, the senior payroll account business manager, they could go and look, are they signing off on those each month? And so that, you know, the auditor can, prove, can take some of this and look for where's the documentation behind that. All of our biz business practices have at least two, almost at minimum three sets of eyes. Okay. Like when you, we talked about the board order, there's four sets of eyes that go across that board order before it's even printed. For you folks to sign. So you should see that what you're looking for is there are multiple positions and are there electronic systems. There are still in Vermont some school systems that work on Excel spreadsheets and not a financial system. So it's trying to lessen the points and possibilities for embezzlement which is get everything electronic, get it into an electronic system that's hard to change it. So you know small, small companies sometimes use QuickBooks but we use Nemric there, mm -hmm. there's other infinite visions is one we could use as well, and then you know are we giving receipts? Are we using bank? You know we don't have an open check checkbook. You've got to you've got to print it through the checkbook system that we have. And it's actually a good resource just for us to see the money flow and like from created a from a purchase order through the payment. And the flow. And it's been a few those. years since we've done that for board members, yeah. but how's the whole financial system go from? I'm a teacher and I need 27 scientific notebooks to how does that get paid? Right. The life of a PO. So. Lori is very good and yeah, she efficient at her job. And definitely, I feel like the checks and balances are, exist uh, essential for that. Is there any other questions on the report? We'll move on to the parking lot update. Yeah. 
<clears throat> well, you can see that it's uh, improved. <laughs> this is probably the last time in, from this winter. So as you know, it's a temporary fix, um, but still I think pretty, pretty decent of a job um, to get us to whatever next point we decide to go further with um, the entire the entire driveway, the circle, or or uh, or beyond. Um, so yeah, I mean the particular job came in under fifteen thousand dollars, and um, uh, they um, patched the stretch that was the worst. Uh, they did patch the holes or the the potholes that were around the circle. Um, so that's where we're at for right now, and uh, I guess as we move forward and discuss whatever else we might want to do in the future. Um, Hopefully that will last a good amount of time. They did say that they would pitch it a little bit so the water would run off, and I've been kind of watching on some of these rainy days how that would work, because I think part of the problem, because it's kind of a low spot there. Um, mm -hmm. So it seems to seems to be doing that, going down to the the, uh, the ditch. So, um, so far so good. So that's where we're at. Definitely much better. Did they say how long it would last? Did they give a general idea? Uh, no, I didn't ask how long Typically. a like that would last. But, uh, what we were getting when we were doing the building renovations, Nicole, yeah. was that if we did what we did, something like that there, that that was probably a three to five year solution mm -hmm. at most because we didn't do anything to the subsurface and we know we've got silt intermixed with the right. gravel and sand. Okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, in two years probably the Frost freezing is going to start cracking, I think, mm -hmm. because the sub base isn't. And there's so much water, and we're going through that wetland area. Yeah. So. Use the rain. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's not bad. That so that's, that's what we know about it. I and mean, we were told that if we really wanted to redo it, we've got to go down three feet, especially in that wet area. Definitely better than it was. Oh yes. Um, it, something that was brought to me relating to the driveway was um, the speed of during drop off and pickup. So I'm not sure if it'd be beneficial, just as an FYI, to say again, repeat it on a loudspeaker, at, especially at pickup. To mm -hmm. It's still a school parking lot. I know the potholes are not there, but he's 15 miles per hour is the closest we know it there. So I definitely got that feedback last week. Uh, I'm really excited. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love the fix, but still have to go slow. All right, 3.3, the community building access and easements. Mm -hmm. So I brought you a sample warning that would show, and the biggest thing that's part of the warning is that we have to post the easements so people have access to them along with the warning. Um, and this is one that's come through Scott Cameron this morning. Uh, he helped us with it for Calus, so it's pretty much the same warning. The pieces that you'll want to, and Scott wants to talk to you about Thursday night, is exactly what's the board want to do and try to do with the easements. And then he's willing to take those and turn them if you want them just the way they are, that's fine, but he thinks it's worth having a conversation with the three of you about what are you trying to accomplish here. Because um, he's got some thoughts that weren't included in CALS, and you can, and Scott's a great attorney. If you say no thank you, he'll go straight with what there is, and if you like it or come up with some other needs that need to be met, he's more than willing to do it. Yeah. So, I think it's great, I mean, to have what CALS had to work from as a great starting point, but I think, as Scott has suggested, it, what works for Callis, we might need to tweak here at Berlin, just because it is a different piece of property. It's definitely yeah. more of a commercial piece that could be something different years down the road. Um, so I think it's definitely worth having a conversation and maybe tweaking the easement a little bit to fit what the needs are here. And I think one of the suggestions Scott had was making sure that even though there's public access, why it's a school or why the, it's a town, 
building that if it were ever to be sold for the private industry that that easement would go away. So I think it's protecting the land in that It's way. protecting your valuation for right. the town folks mm -hmm. because this is a very valuable piece of property, Vera, you and I know because you were approached at one point about potential selling it for commercial pieces and you would hate, the town would hate to lose that evaluation by always having in the easement public access. Right. Yeah, I mean, to me, I just want his view on how do we have it all covered between that yeah. gap, between the way that it's written and what the easement is trying to make sure we're bridging yeah. like what's any of our potential risks. And he can help you with that. Yeah. And you'll have that yeah. meeting in an executive session, as you should, with your attorney, and then he can go right up what you need yeah. to present to the voters. So what we'll need to do is have you meet with Scott, and then somewhere before when we do we need to figure out the date that we'd like to have that public meeting and then 30 days before that have you come together and quickly approve the warning I can't suggest to, I can't recommend tonight that you approve that warning because you haven't seen the easements and right. I think it's right to get the easements done and then do the whole thing at once so it is going to mean Thursday night meeting and one more meeting but the other meeting can be 15 minutes and Julia, if you're at work and need to be on the phone, you can do it through teleconference. Okay. It, it can be just one of those types of things. Yes. Yeah. We'll have to get your signature that day somehow. Yep. But um, the meeting part of it can be happen that way. Okay. Did you have any questions on that? I'm just reading. Okay. And we'll have time to ask our questions on Thursday. Okay. So great. And you have all, you all three of you have copies of the callus materials, or should yes. I make sure they're ready? That you, does anyone need um, copies for Thursday night? I I'm just not going to be, I'm not going to be able to be here Thursday night, but Scott, you guys okay. will be fine with yeah. Scott. Um, and I'm going to ask Aaron, I guess I haven't asked him yet, but I'm I'll just reprint off the copy. I gave my copy to, I think, Justin or somebody on the select board yeah. ended up with my copy. But you have, have it. I have it. Okay. Yeah, I do. And you, you, can you share a copy of yes. that with me? Okay. Yep. That's what I'm saying, the callous one. Yeah. And, and it, it, I'll at least get to Aaron, the Berlin one, because he finished that on Friday afternoon. And I just didn't ship that up. He had like basically a find and replace of callous in Berlin within the easements to make sure Aaron can print some of those off. All right. Board member vacancy update. I have had nothing. Nothing. I haven't. 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 I There's just very little interest, but there's such a short time now, really, so it would be yeah. hard to find the right person that would want to fill in just for a few minutes. All right. Um, Act 46 update. There was a piece in our packet. I think it was just it was just some of the memos that I've sent around to yep. the transition boards, um, and I believe Vera, I heard that Thursday night, since I wasn't able to be there, you, the transition board approved recommending the budget to the yep. merge board, yep. and that um, you worked on some articles amendments to the Articles of Agreement, mm -hmm. and but you hadn't come totally to a decision on Article 4. Did I hear that we right? We were not split equally, but it was a 5 to 6, <laughs> which I believe in a meeting prior to that, back in March, it was like a 3 to 4 yeah. by a straw vote, so it was still... And it still has a straw vote piece. Yeah. Yeah. So Chris is writing up some more, trying to write things up, and at least have a rough form for Wednesday, but he's not yes. going to have the... Warning, ready to go on Wednesday. So he said he So then we'll be meeting again. At I least think I'd watch your email as if the meeting's happening on the 15th or not yet. Okay. I, I know there's some question whether it's happening or not. Okay. I just haven't heard the answer to that. Right. Um, other than that, I mean, things are moving forward with the Act 46 as they need to be so that the organization is up and going for July 1 and there's no lapse in. The different moving pieces because the stool's still going to be moving forward. So I think um, central office and board members are 
do the best that they can to make sure that right now everything's running in parallel with the current boards and transition board and new board and uh, making sure it goes as smoothly as possible, which I've come with so far it's been smooth, but we'll see how it goes from here on out. Um, superintendent search update. I don't know that anything has really happened. Since Interviews we've are asked. happening right now. Mm -hmm. Today and Thursday. Yep. And then the executive committee will meet on the twenty third. And do some interviews. Yeah. Yep. And hopefully presenting a final candidate on the meeting on the twenty ninth to the full board. Okay. And there actually was I was very surprisingly shocked. Um, and impressed that we had as many viable candidates as we did being kind of asleep in the process. But um, Mark, I think Andrews, did his due, yeah. due diligence and found us some good candidates, which was good for hope. All right. Mm -hmm. um, reports to the board 4.1. All right. Good evening. So you have my principal's report in the packet, and there's a lot of information I want to go over today. Um, <clears throat> at the top, you'll see that I want to talk about behavior data, which I had a handout for, and uh, our MTSS, which is Multi-Tiered System of Sport, um, action plan that I wanted to go over. So before I pass this out, um, it's a busy time of year <laughs> here at school. For all schools, May is very busy, so um, things are... Uh, things are going well, things are going pretty smooth, but we still have plenty of time left. Um, and I've been kind of sharing this message of this message of finishing strong with students and staff that, you know, right up until the, the last day we work hard and, and uh, not coast to the end of the year. So um, it's, uh, it's looking to be a, a solid, solid end of the year with the way things are going. So I'm going to pass around uh, our um, some behavior data, and I thought I'd share it. I mean, it is May, so we're getting towards the end here, and uh, I have a number of different graphs in, in in this packet. I just wanted to kind of walk you through some of the things that we look at when we are looking at some of our overall uh, behavior data. What this is in this packet are, are any any office referrals. So. If at any point a teacher is feeling or a staff member is feeling that uh, a student action um, warrants coming to the office to see the principal, um, or perhaps the behavior specialist, Lucia, uh, it's documented and um, goes into this system. This is, you'll see SWIS Swiss at the top. This is one of our, this is our data collection system that we, that we use to track uh, these, these kinds of kinds of things. Um, we review this with staff throughout the year just to see how things are going. We analyze it. We look at uh, different aspects, which I'll show you today. And um, I would say that overall, not only looking at the data, but just in in conversation with, with, with faculty and staff, uh, everyone is feeling like students are doing a better job with their decision making and teachers are doing a better job with uh, expectations and follow through and, and just our whole uh, uh, positive behavior system and and how we we, we support students in in their behavior um, so the first on the very first page you'll see average referrals per day per month the green bars are last year's monthly number of again these are like major office referrals per day and it is uh, averaged out it's not obviously every day I'm getting one or two Referrals. There might be some chunks of days that you'll see that are can be higher than others. Um, I think overall we're kind of we're kind of 50/50 compared to last year. Some months this year were better than last year. Um, I think overall, as you can see at the very bottom uh, of the table, um, and again the year isn't over yet, <laughs> but uh, uh, 239 total last year and 171 currently where we're at. So. Um, as you go through this packet, there's some more details that we do look at as a staff. So like page two looks at uh, actual areas of the building or, um, uh, yeah, you know, in, in class or in the hallway or, 
or on the playground, um, in the cafeteria, on the bus. Uh, so you can see that in some cases, the number of, of referrals or locations of, of, of poor behavior are lower. Um, but in other areas, like the bus, for example, we've had some more challenges this year. So these are areas that we can look at and say, hey, we know that there's issues on, on the bus. Let's identify a little bit more who, what's going on, you know, what, what, uh, how, can we, how can we support kids to do a little bit of a better job in those, in those areas. So obviously this is important to, to look at. Um, jump in with questions as I, as I go through. I mean, there's a lot of pages here. I don't want to So stall. I do have some questions. Okay. Um, so the playground is obviously a hot spot mm -hmm. for behaviors. And I know um, there's been discussions about what to do for playground um, to get the kids more involved in physical activity out there, but yet not too structured, where they're kind of doing some of their own problem solving and finding that balance. Um, obviously, it's going to be different with different ages. Um, but adding more equipment out there, which I believe is some fundraisers that are mm -hmm. happening. Um, what has some of the conversations been about what type of equipment to put out there versus um, I know that there's some kids amongst the higher grades, fourth, fifth, sixth specifically, well, three, four, five, six, that have often expressed like wanting to play soccer or football. And it often is one of those things that's taken away mm -hmm. because a small group of kids have made a poor decision with it. So then it's taken away from all of them. So what discussions have happened as you're looking into playground equipment with what's best fit for all the ages, or is it just a piece of equipment to replace a piece over on the younger primary? Yeah, no, that's a, that's and a, that's it kind a of ties question. in with behavior. All yeah, of sure. Yeah, how how they're engaged outside is important. So there hasn't been any there hasn't been any formal discussion on like what we'd want to see out there. Um, uh, I I want to ask the kids what they would like to see out on the playground. We've had pockets of discussion with like PTNA. We've had some discussion. I've had some parents that have wanted to help with some fundraising um, that have talked to me about some some different ideas. One need that had that has come up or has been um, talked about for a period of time is a structure for pre-K. By regulation, they have to have you know, certain, certain uh, um, play structures and fenced in areas. So the thought was, you know, do, we, do, we, do we focus on that? Do we do something that might um, accommodate you know, pre-K to six, what's available out there? So to answer your question, we're really in the, uh, early stages of, okay, how can we start to gather more information of what the kids would like to see out there? Um, I'm going to do actually a student survey <laughs> to see, um, and I've looked at, I've looked at different companies and different types of structures. I mean, you can imagine how elaborate some can be and how basic others can be. Um, uh, but there, it's interesting just with today's designs and the um, elaborate pieces that could be on a playground structure. I mean, everything from little climbing walls to, to little cave things to um, manipulatives on the actual structure. You know, do we want a, a totally slide versus a, a three-person slide? I mean, there's all kinds of different things that I'd like the kids to have some say in. So um, that's, that's, that's where we're at right now with, <laughs> with uh, and I think too, maybe um, we haven't, even though some folks have wanted to start some fundraising, we don't have a target yet because we don't have an idea of what we want it to be. So I've allowed um, uh, some folks that really wanted to get some ideas started for fundraising to go ahead and do that, knowing that we don't quite have a, hey, this is what we're, this is what we're aiming for right now. So I've carved before the, before the horse a little bit on that, but um, that's where we're at. So great question, though. Yeah. Um, so uh, to kind of keep going, um, again, this is multi-year data here, green versus blue. Uh, you can see some of the different kinds of issues that we, that we look at. I think they're on, I don't know, page three or four, uh, referrals by problem behavior. Um, 
sometimes, unfortunately, if it's a particular student that might have some challenges um, that might show in the data only because the number of kids are not astronomically high here at, at our school compared to other schools. So, you know, one student that might have um, some challenges might show up in the data a little bit more than others. So um, we do still see some issues around defiance and uh, in this case some, some aggression. Um, you know, whether that be, you know, um, um, uh, aggression towards peers or not aggression towards peers, but just maybe aggression in the classroom on the playground when no other peers are around, but perhaps towards, towards an adult. Um, so that's reported as well. Can you give us an example? I see there's other behaviors, and it was one in the previous year, current year is five. Mm. What would fall in that category that's not covered in these other? Mm. And it's higher than? That's a good question. I would have to look into that. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Okay. No biggie. I was just yeah. curious what wouldn't fall into yeah. those. Other I'm curious now, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think what's missing from that list. It's pretty extensive. <laughs> All right, so the next page is uh, some two charts here again. So th th this is current year. Um, we also look at just what, what, what month might be presenting more challenges than others. Um, typically, uh, December, as you can see, February, this month, April, was, was high with a number of referrals. And we do sit down and ask ourselves, what, what could be some factors that might cause it to be a little bit higher? Is it, is it, uh, vacations? Are kids anxious about you know February and, and April break? Is it some cabin fever? <laughs> is it something that the teachers need to be focusing on or staff need to be focusing on that time of year? Um, so we ask all those kinds of questions and think what can we do to to um, improve the next time around. Uh, again, another just another chart about uh, specific behaviors under that. We can even separate it out on the following page by. Uh, by place, which we talked a little bit about in the comparison chart. Uh, so this is all current year. Um, also by by time, we do track when when these things are happening. So uh, you might typically think, well, recess can be a challenging time for for students, a little bit less structured. Um, we can see in some cases, like at the very end of the day after four o'clock, that's that's the bus. Um, you know, so we can look at patterns on by time of day. Is one o'clock after lunch typically? Um, it's typically, yes. It depends classes. on well, it depends on what class. Like five, six is going out to recess at that time. Everybody else is in from, uh, well, I guess it depends. I'd have to think about what, what grade is coming in mm -hmm. from recess at that time. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that whole kind of like lunch recess hour is, is right about in there. And then obviously by we can look at specific students, which this is all by, by number here. So we don't have any identifying people there. Um, days of the week is also something that we track. And uh, it's interesting how for that Wednesday it seemed to be high, or the highest. Um, uh, I don't know if it's the early dismissal or just, you know. <laughs> it's different than what we usually see in most schools. Usually, at least my experience has been watching either coming off the weekend or going into mm -hmm. the weekend. Yeah. Because yeah. there's either anxiety or issues that have come from the weekend. Right. Yeah. Those mm -hmm. are usually the high points. Yeah. So it's, that's, I haven't seen one. This is the first one of all these that really isn't being yeah. the standard pattern. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's apparently it's been like that. I think last year was, I was told that it was, it was similar. Um, and then uh, by grade level as well, we also also can track, so wow. um, it just helps us in making decisions when we are able to look at this kind of data this, this closely, so. Any questions about that? I have a lot of other things to report on tonight, so <laughs> I'm going fast there. We actually saved a lot of time for her. There were some good things to go over good. with, with okay. the board, so. All right. So the next thing I want to pass out in terms of supporting students is our EST, or Educational Support Team process, and also our multi-tiered systems of support 
action plan. I think I've talked about this at our other meetings just verbally, but I wanted to actually share with you some documents tonight so you have it. So uh, most schools have a EST process, um, and gosh, a number of years ago, the state of Vermont came out with some recommendations on a solid process, and most schools have been using this type of process for a while now. Um, coming on board here, there were some some gaps in uh, uh, the structure, um, and I worked with um, a committee here, our EST team now, to tighten up on some of these things uh, to ensure that we are doing a better job at ensuring um, all students are getting what, what they need. So the, the typical process, uh, and one that we've revisited here, is um, making sure that if teachers have a concern, or even if a parent has a concern about their child, that there's a process to advocating for them a little bit more stronger, um, a little bit stronger. So teachers are asked to show that they are using anything and everything they can to uh, identify what the student need is um, and have some steps in place to try to remedy that. So we're making sure that teachers are uh, taking the responsibility to use all their tools um, to ensure that uh, uh, they're helping that student with whatever issue they might be facing. Um, if they get stuck and they're just not seeing results through um, monitoring and, and collecting data, um, there's a level of working with colleagues. We have, we have graded team meetings here throughout the week and throughout the month for, for teachers to collaborate. Um, it might also be you know, working with, with interventionists to talk about what a student need might be. Um, communication with parents, obviously. We want to make sure that the parents are aware, are aware of, of what's going on. If teachers are still feeling stuck, then they have a process to be able to refer that student to, this, this, to our team. Um, and then we meet with parents to have a little bit more of a formal uh, support plan in place. Um, you may have heard it called the EST plan, and, and uh, we um, uh, meet to talk about all the things that the teacher has done, um, but also think, kind of like a think tank, think about what else we can do to uh, put supports in place for students. And then we, we monitor that throughout the year. Um, we might meet, depending on the need, monthly or, or a few times a year. Um, but it's a little bit more of a structured process to make sure that that um, we're supporting students. Is there an ES? Sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, is the ES team uh, variable by the situation or the student or the need? The or core team is made up of a number of different people in the building. Yeah. Um, um, but we invite relevant people to whatever the case may be. So, right. if it's, so it is variable, like, oh, by, absolutely. The, yeah, yeah. by the situation. Um, like, do we need a specialist to come and yeah. be part of the process and we invite them to come? So it might be OT, yeah. occupational therapist, yeah. um, joining um, to help with a, a particular need, interventionists, of course, outside folks that might be relevant yeah. to come in. Um, at one time, the EST also um, was a group formed for students who also needed to be challenged mm -hmm. academically or enrichments mm -hmm. um, as well. So is that still being done with the same team? Yes, and we've, we've made that clear that this is for all students. So if on the other end of the, you know, uh, other side of the coin, if you will, um, a student that might be advanced or um, struggling because they're bored, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. uh, then this is also, you know, the same process to be able to help them with that support. So that's a little bit of an overview of, of the process. Um, coming on board, there were a number of different committees around a student support, um, our behavior support system, and there's different tiers within that. So there were a lot, there were committees within that, that tiered system, and a lot of it were, was the same folks because you know, we're only so big and some folks have shared responsibilities for different things. So uh, it made sense to have to have one solid leadership team or our EST team that um, 
uh, does a lot of these same functions. If you turn the page, you'll see our, our action plan. And uh, this is specific to, to student support. Again, MTSS is multi-tiered systems of support. Um, same, same committee. And uh, this past spring, um, we, we attended some, some professional development around how to strengthen our, our system. And we came up with a mission to focus on um, fostering a coordinated system of supports, monitor progress, and support staff with necessary resources to increase academic outcomes and social emotional well-being for all students. So we took those core elements from our mission, and they're within the plan here. Um, so you can see on the left, to increase academic outcomes and social emotional well-being for all students. And then we have goals and tasks and a timeline to kind of uh, drill down from that, from those pieces of that mission. Um, a little bit further, we talk about um, um, our coordinated system of, of supports, monitoring progress, and, and supporting staff. So you can see that we have a number of different things in our task list that at this time we feel will be important to get us move, moving forward in a, in a more coordinated system um, uh, to support students. So um, I talked a little bit about our EST system just a moment ago. Um, an SEL program is something that we've been talking about and at the supervisory union level a committee is now formed to help implement. Uh, SEL is a social, social and emotional learning program. Um, so across the supervisory union in time, uh, we will have a program to be able to help students around that. So question. Yeah, jump in, please. Um, so you haven't picked a program yet? You're working no. On. Okay. The, we'll, we'll, we'll be piloting it at the, at the supervisory union level and then looking at not next fall, but <coughs> the following year to have fully implemented something across the issue. I think the discussion of the leadership team is trying to bring more resources for teachers so they weren't creating it from scratch. Yeah. We have all our elementary teachers go through responsive classroom, which is a big part of that social emotional learning, but we feel that we could give more tools to the teacher if we had a program as well that they could help. Definitely. Yeah. Help them with it. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Um, so is this what you do, like if someone thinks they might need a 504 or IEP, is this what you would do or is that a different is that a different kind of... Um... That, that's a great question. Um, one of the things through this, this EST process, uh, as you can see, it's kind of like a you know, um, step type of thing through this, through this flowchart. Uh, but one thing that we, I don't think it's necessarily mentioned here, but... Maybe have a box for it. Yeah, we've, we, we had a lot of discussion about this because I've seen plans where, you know, in order to go to a... Uh, special education or, or a 504 referral is you have to go through this. But in some cases, um, whether a student might move in or there might be some serious red flags on, wow, we really need to have a discussion about needs that we're seeing. Um, we agreed that this isn't a have to to go towards a, a special education referral. A teacher with um, communication with parents, myself, a special educator, um, might decide we need to just go towards a special ed referral or a 504 just based on what we're what what the student presenting does that make sense yes. so they don't have to go through est <laughs> but it could be an option i guess or a parent the parent might not know if they what they need mm -hmm. they might not know what a 504 is or ap they might not know anything right um, i guess what would they do would they, they would go through kind of through this or they would talk like you were saying talk with you if it, I mean, if, if a parent had a concern, you know, talk to the teacher, talk to me. Um, we've had parents that have requested uh, a special a special education evaluation, and we were a, a responsibility to meet with that parent within you know, 10 or 15 days um, to, right. to discuss it. So if something comes our way uh, in terms of a parent referral for a special education evaluation, right. then we have to sit down right away and, and talk about it. And, as a team decide what's what's the next best course of course of action and not just you know kind of brush it off so not that we ever would do something like that <laughs> and one more question yeah a teacher or a parent has a concern about a student so any concern generally 
Okay. Oh, of course. Just a yeah. general concern. Okay. Concern. Yeah. You know, a teacher might have a more specific concern around their progress in reading, or right. uh, maybe it's a behavioral thing that is a, a new a new behavior that hasn't been happening. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a change in the student in how they're presenting themselves, um, <coughs> and it might be concerning. And this is also different than the CSP. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the CSP, yes, it would be very different. But it's kind of, has a little bit of some. Well, a lot of, a lot of those, when you think about CSP, which is um, a coordinated service plan, which usually goes with students already on an IEP, that doesn't have to be. It doesn't. Uh, CSP does not have right. to be, but it, but it usually does. And it coordinates with outside full service supports, like some of outside supports. Right. This is what the, is done, and I'll let Aaron's going to talk about that, but any of those plans, um, I mean, the whole, I think it's the, it's, it's the next level up to think about is like, how do we best support all students? Right. And um, a student that, it, some people start to think about these as like layers, and they aren't necessarily layers either. It's, as Aaron said, you don't have to go through an EST to access a 504 or mm -hmm. IEP, but you don't go through a 504 to get to an IEP, or, you know, you, you need a process flow it. for all of those. Yeah. Yeah. In the one thing, yeah. 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 if it's then not, statements, yeah. you know, yeah. where there you are, going. There are a lot of if then <laughs> statements. But a lot of it is that the most important thing is that conversation between the teacher and the parent and the student. And where are the concerns? Yeah. I, think that, I think that's what you said, Aaron, is that's where it starts. Yeah. yeah, and parents being aware that they have options. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you. Sorry about all the questions. questions. Yeah. So we're back to the action plan. Um, that on the uh, on I guess page two of this packet, um, you'll see one of the other tasks that we've talked about, and this is one that's kind of one of those those big lofty ideas uh, is talking about how can we look more like a full service school. Now these kinds of things I would I wouldn't. Um, Something like this is something that, in my opinion, might be shared at a higher level than just the school. You know, I could see perhaps a conversation with, with, with Kelly <laughs> around some of these supports. You know, when we're talking about um, uh, an in-house therapist, um, doctor, dentist, barber, you know, these kinds of things that some, some families might have um, uh, struggling access. Um, you know, how can we how can we help provide some of that, even if it's just a little bit? Um, so it's a it's one of those twinkles in our eyes right now of of perhaps thinking about some of these things to help to help with kids. Schools have done it before, um, and uh, it just kind of tickled our fancy to investigate some of these kinds of things. Well, you wrote in here, you know, and you know, because you've heard at the at our leadership team meetings that Callis and East Montpelier and U Thirty Two are partnering with the Plainfield mm -hmm. Health Center. Okay. They, they health center received a received a grant to be able to partner with the schools. So, yeah. and since they serve it in all, their, they service seven or nine towns in every school within their service area. Yeah. Well, that'd be great. We're not in their service area. We are not. Uh, but we do have. I'm sure we have. We have a hospital pretty close. Yeah. We do. Yeah. Yes. Uh, going a little bit further, just some other action steps that we look to take and some things, again, that we've already started. Um, helping progress monitor assessments. You know, what is it? Ensuring that students that go to intervention, whether it be reading or math, um, that we're having more conversation uh, with interventionists about how it's going. Um, and also helping support through programs. Um, if students are in intervention for a long period of time, then we know it's not working and we need to do something else. So perhaps it's the approach, perhaps it's um, the material, um, perhaps we're not targeting specific skills. So our committee wants to be able to kind of help monitor that a little bit better um, in a supportive kind of way. We've talked a lot about scheduling. There's only so much time in the day, but kind of trying to balance um, what intervention looks like during the day here at school. Um, so having a little bit more oversight as a, as a team on the school schedule to say this is going to maximize classroom instruction, 
when kids might come out for, for intervention um, and how it all kind of flows so each kid is getting a maximized day with, with what they're getting. Um, we've talked about special, specialization and that really is uh, capitalizing on teacher strengths to teach that specific subject area. We see it more in fifth, sixth, where Mr. Smith might be teaching the math and science and Ms. Boucher might be doing social studies and reading. So students would go to the different teachers for that, right. those subject areas, because those are the strengths of the teachers. Um, I've had hesitation to do this in any of my career, having, you know, thinking about first and second graders going to different teachers for, for instruction. Um, but after going to these workshops, uh, and having more conversation, um, I'm a little bit more sold on it and thinking that there could be some potential someday to, to explore it a little bit more. <laughs> Again, kind of in the, the beginning thoughtful stages of is, is this something that would, would help benefit our students. Um, if you think about every classroom teacher needing to teach all subject areas um, within a day, um, you know, if we have folks that um, uh, have strengths in, in math, versus reading, then perhaps there could be some sharing of, of that instruction um, to help kids. So more on that in, in the future. Um, a few other things that uh, we've talked about. Um, there are seven Vermont guiding principles to MTSS that are really, really powerful for us to, to revisit. I don't, I didn't attach it, but um, if you Google it, you can see what those are, and, and uh, they really help guide schools in doing all the right things to support students. Um, roles and responsibilities for staff, um, again, targeted intervention, making sure we know what kids are, are in intervention at this community level. Um, everyone considered an interventionist. One school that we visited, there were parts of the day where um, different staff members worked with kids in some capacity and even if it was just something small um, you know it might be here like Mr. Pocket doing uh, something with kids for for 10 minutes in the morning um, uh, so not necessarily saying that an interventionist um, is you know a licensed person but for a student intervention might be spending 10 minutes with the custodian and and doing something in the morning for a small, you know, a small job that might get them engaged in in the day. So, not not intervention by definition, but more uh, how how are staff connecting with kids throughout the day in a in a positive way. Um, and on the last page, uh, some things around monitoring progress. Um, we have started to do monthly data analysis as as a uh, as a staff. As teachers, um, it's it's formal time using a protocol to look at student data and create a plan to address whatever uh, they might be seeing in that data. Um, we plan to do that more regularly going into next year, at least once once a month during a staff meeting, if not if not twice a month. Um, we have been wanting to really figure out how we can better maximize some of our data tools like Infinite Campus, Star 360, it's all there, um, uh, but we need to, we just need to develop teachers to be able to utilize it a little bit, a little bit better. I think some of it's just more of a comfort level. Um, and supporting staff, obviously, like I said, data analysis, uh, we have our math program that is beginning up this, this next year. Um, I've been working with some folks to ensure a, a strong uh, professional development plan for teachers to be able to roll this out effectively. Um, we have some teachers attending an Orton Gillingham training in the fall. Uh, that is a approach to um, really understanding the English language a little bit better and how it uh, um, the structure of it. Um, so that comes into play in teaching reading and at a more of a phonics based approach and uh, our actual committee meeting with grade level teams throughout the year to um, help with a lot of the school initiatives that we've that we've put in place over the year like responsive classroom and PBIS 
um, things like calming corners and, and uh, um, other kinds of initiatives around uh, instruction or, or behavior. Any questions on, on that? I know that was a lot. <laughs> I don't have any questions. No, I mean, I think it's great. So what are the next steps? I mean, so it's a great foundation. Yeah. Are the, how does that work? That's great. Uh, well, this committee, we actually meet weekly, which is, in my opinion, excellent, because we're on top of yeah. each time, you know, what are we going to do? We've been trying to um, structure our weeks a little bit better. At first, we decided that, you know, like every other week would be looking at student data, um, and then the other weeks would be you know, meeting with teachers or, or parents if it's part of the process, or even working on our action plan steps. It's been a little bit more um, structural right now. Uh, right now we're kind of mired in um, class schedules for next year, so we've been talking a lot about how do we get, uh, what does intervention scheduling look like, um, and uh, how, that, how that kind of fits. So, um, we've done some things, as you can see, uh, spring 2019, um, the social-emotional learning system was something we weren't sure was going to happen, and uh, so we had been investigating some ideas um, ahead of time, but it's good now that we're going to look at it at an SU level. Um, we've had meetings more recently where we've talked about certain kids that might go through this process, so um, it's just a matter of keeping up on... on uh, how we end the year and um, structure this moving forward. So it's been a lot of it's been a lot of this part this year. Like a lot of this, we had to revisit the whole thing. So um, teachers have come with a lot of questions, like what do I do about this and what do, you know about that. So we we go back to this and say, okay, so we got to do to make it more um, systematic. So okay. Okay. So will yeah. more time be spent during staff meetings as you're progressing towards more uh, integrating in the fall mm -hmm. so that the whole staff is well aware of the process and the goals in the end? Yes. Yeah. We've had two staff meetings where we've gone over this. <laughs> um, so I think it's just kind of keeping it at the forefront of people's minds. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Great, thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, a couple of things in my report that I wanted to highlight. So uh, as you can see, there's a, a table of next year's configuration, or at least at this point, what it's shaping up to look like. Um, we have a we currently have a, a smaller kindergarten class, and uh, that kindergarten class moving up to first grade um, is going to create a, a two one two classes. Um, so you can see we'll, we'll have two kindergartens next year. We do have um, quite a few pre-K students coming in or moving up, and then a number of kindergarten registrations already. Um, so we, we we will have enough for two kindergarten classes and two first and second grade combined classes, three, three, four, and three, five, six classes. So that's where we're at right now. I'm, I'm sorry? Could I get this one? Sure, so two kindergarten classes, two first and second grade combined classes, three, three, four classes, and three, five, six classes. Um, <clears throat> well, the three, four classes, do a little bit kind of what you're referring to that like Mr. Smith Snap from Boucher do in regards to like what their specialization but yeah well again we we're not quite ready for that change uh, at the K to 4 level yet um, it was really the second half of the year where we started to talk about that I wouldn't be comfortable just throwing that on anybody K to 4 going into next year quite yet um, but it's to me it's a to me it's a big change for a teacher to to do that in in my opinion. Um, okay. So right now it's just five six. It would be. So if we have three of those classes that aren't specialized and they're going to do everything, why why are there three fours combined? 
Like how do we, like it's oh, just hard to understand like where the yeah. numbers come from of why we're combining sure. classes. Sure, so the number of, if you think about the total number of fifth and sixth graders, that's 60 students. So it's about 30 in each grade. So it's about 30 fifth graders and 30 sixth graders. Mm -hmm. um, the reason that, and, and, and that's just about the same for every grade level, same for three, four, it's about you know, 30 third graders and 30 fourth graders. So if it's not so much that 20 kids are gonna have Smith, this is a little bit more of, let's say there'd be 20 kids in Mr. Smith's homeroom class. Yep. And then from there, we, we look at scheduling. So because, it's, because 30 is kind of an odd number for splitting kids up. Um, I wouldn't give 30 kids to, I wouldn't give 30 sixth, uh, sixth graders to one teacher and then 15 fifth graders to another and 15 fifth graders to another. Yeah. And that would be the same for any combination. That's what's just, it's, it's, it's an odd thing about the numbers here at, at, at Berlin. Yeah, um, it's just hard to see that math you're referring to, right? Yeah, to me, I see yeah. no, you're right. two grades combined with three teachers, just wondering. Yeah, no, that's a great point. We're going more and more every mm -hmm. year. There's more. They're they're all combined now. Whereas there have been years previously, some were combined, some weren't combined. So, I'm trying to understand. Right, right. So, for example, like same thing with like three, four. Um, you know, about you know twenty twenty eight to thirty kids in fourth grade, and twenty to thirty in in third grade, amongst three teachers. How do you how do you separate that out? The way we have to do is combine them all and then separate in, separate it in, into to thirds. Um, so even so, like one two, it's not that there's 17 kindergartners coming up and 17 second graders. It's um, you know 12 or 13 kindergarten. Um, so there's going to be more second graders within two classes versus first graders in, in two. Yep. So. So are they still point, separating no though at the younger grades with the one, two, three, four? Are they still separating specifically for math and literacy? For math, we do separate out. Yes. But not for literacy. Not so much. Not so much for literacy. No, it's that's. Uh, um, we don't. We don't separate out for that. Teachers are differentiating within the students' um, ability level as best they can. With math, it's a little bit different. Um, going with the program next year, it's a little bit more scripted by grade level, so we just want to honor that process and we try to separate it out that way. So that, mm -hmm. that we actually, uh, um, Kim Ferone has helped with some of that math instruction this year to help with that configuration. So that is one area that we do separate out. Mm -hmm. I actually personally think it's, uh, the three, four grade, I find it to be very hard to have academically those grades all being taught by one teacher because there can be such a wide range of learning at those levels. And, you know, it's great if the math is at least being broke out, but I would definitely, um, I would support as much as possible doing that with literacy too, just because. It's, um, I find that grade specifically to be very difficult. The, the literacy, range. it's, it's a, a huge range, huge range, range of, of, yeah. <clears throat> That's why I was. So, as you're looking at scheduling for next year, just feedback from us. No, I appreciate it, yeah, that no, was great. Well, that, the, the difficulty it is for the teacher, mm -hmm. you know, to have that many children in the room with that literature for right. hand, it's gonna be tough. It is, we did Montessori, and so we did it. That's Right range. Yeah. Yeah. So again, with this chart, I kind of wanted to more like map out who would be doing what. Um, so as you can also see, we have a new, we're working on hiring a 3-4 teacher. Um, in terms of that update, we are. Is that, po that's posted and scheduled for interviews or what, where is that at? We've, right we've interviewed. Uh, this week we're doing uh, demonstration lessons with some of our finalists. Um, Another change that uh, I'm not sure if folks are aware of, but um, um, Mr. Smith next year will be 
moving to what Kim Farone has been doing for math intervention. So we have posted a 5-6 uh, position um, that obviously says Smith on the, my report here, but this was pretty recent, so um, that change will be, will be happening as well. So we're looking to hire a 5th, 6th teacher for one year going into next year. Um, <clears throat> this is an update on that. Um, I have a question. Yep. So Miss Desiro is moving again, right? From she was in kinder last year. Now she's first and second, and now she's mm -hmm. going back. Yeah. So what do you do for those kids who have her mm -hmm. that are from first transition to second, and then they have to go to a new teacher? Yeah. So recently, um, kindergarten and one two got together to um, look at kindergartens going into first and second and current first and they had to create class lists amongst two teachers so there's def there's there's a lot of shifting <laughs> that took place going into the next next year so let's check out empowering does that make sense yes yeah. did you have what did you have for kindergarten? Just one teacher this year? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because it's very small. It's a very class. small. Mm -hmm. It's very small. Mm -hmm. It's probably the smallest I've seen for the seven years. <coughs> I actually have to say it's probably, it is the smallest. I think it is. The TK, you don't have TK like on here. A long time. Pre-K on here. I don't. We don't have pre-K on here. No. No. But pre-K is full. Pre-K is full. full. Yeah. yeah. We have. Um, That's great. We have. Uh, well. Hmm. Right now, there's five as of as of today. I'm, we might have four. We might be filling. Somebody might be leaving. Uh, so yeah, we're both both morning and afternoon are full, um, and our waiting list is is five as of today. So, and sad there's a waiting list, but happy there is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we, it's and a good. You know, we're still getting calls. I know Chris got a call today for another registration and you know, waiting list. So a few other things in my report to share, and then a couple other things that I thought of that are not on the report here. Um, we have a Memorial Day ceremony coming up. Um, I know Berlin has had one for years. Uh, this year, um, I'm helping organize it, so it might look a little bit different, but I think you'll enjoy it. So it's gonna be on Wednesday, May 22nd at 1.45, and uh, we'll be welcoming um, Barry BFW Post 790 to, uh, joining us. Um, we're going to have students reading poems in a very unique kind of way. Um, we will have music, um, and uh, it looks to be a very important and impactful event. So I do welcome parents and community members um, to, to join us that day. It's going to be, I think it's going to be really great. So that's one of our big end of the year events. Of course, we have a number of a number of different things. Uh, we've been talking about scheduling um, the details of our PTNA's end of the year picnic, which is on the 17th, it's a Monday. Um, we have a handful of field trips that are happening at the end of the year. Fifth and sixth grade is going to Plymouth Plantation. Um, some local trips, like today, third and fourth grade went to Barry Opera House. Um, Vins is a popular destination. Um, also towards the end of the year, typically the last day of school, we have step up day where students go to the next year's teacher and uh, get to know them and their classmates and, and do some activity. Um, a few other things that are happening, we do have a concert coming up. Um, we do have our school play through our rec program that will be happening in June. I believe it's, gosh, I don't have it in front of me, but um, the date, I think it's yeah. June 5th. June, yeah, that's what I thought, June 5th. Um, so those are just some of the end of the year events that are that are happening. Um, <clears throat> we've recently, we recently finished our SBAC testing and uh, things went well. There weren't really any hitches or hangups with the technology or the teachers administering the, uh, the SBAC. Um, obviously, students Sometimes they're absent, and we have a makeup schedule this week for that. Um, as a school, uh, I just encourage students to do their best. 
you know, we don't do a lot of hoopla around it. Um, some schools might go extreme with, you know, SBAC stuff. Um, but I just encourage kids just to do their best. And I know teachers do as well. So in those moments where, <coughs> where, where uh, we're focused, we're quiet, we're structured, but we try not to stress students out. We just do your best, take your time, and um, that's what we that's what we hope for. Is there many students that need to do the makeup? For <coughs> not, not, not too many. No, it hasn't been too crazy. I mean, I can we can schedule pockets of it this week in in, in small groups and get it get it done. So it wasn't too bad. That's good. Um, yeah. And for some kids, it's just one section, so it might be three kids needing needing you know a math session that they missed on one day, and the next day, you know, five that missed um, the language arts. So um, overall, we're maybe upwards of of uh, considering that there were um, seven days of it, 15 students that need to make up a piece, and then some students that have to finish some sections which they're allowed to allowed to do. So, yeah. uh, a few other things I wanted to mention, um, just an important thing in my opinion. Um, teachers meet every year on goal setting and. Uh, we set goals in the fall, and then I meet with them at the end of the year as they reflect and report on their progress. And I've been very happy with teachers' goals this year and the progress that they've they've made. Um, they're asked to show evidence of their work, and uh, um, I've been really impressed with the amount of reflection that that they do when we sit down and meet. Um, I mean, some of us have been, some teachers and I have been meeting for for at least an hour to talk about all the things that they've done this year for um, not only their goals, but the, uh, the different instructional domains that, um, that they're responsible for. So we've had some really good conversations around, around that. So it's been good work around that. Um, Are you giving them feedback mm -hmm. during the process? Yep, yep, and our teacher point allows me to do walkthroughs. So it's documented in, in the system where I go in and uh, it's kind of like a mini observation. <laughs> Um, and I get feedback through that realm, but also during our meeting at the end of the year, I, I talk about any strengths and um, concerns that also go into their evaluation as well. So yes, that discussion happens as, as well, for sure. So that's part of that, that, that uh, evaluation piece of, of the goal setting process. Uh, some things around facility and maintenance. Um, obviously, it's nicer out, so we're doing a lot of outdoor cleaning. Um, cleaning up the, the plow damage is starting to happen, getting the dirt off the driveway. Um, talked about the driveway fix. Uh, one thing that, that Chuck and I have talked about and just wanted to kind of put a bug in, in your ear is the, the fence that goes along the back of the property here. Um, I think it, it only goes so far. And the thought or hope is that someday we might uh, fence the rest of it. Um, you know, there's some property back there. Um, just maybe something the next time you are out there, just to, to peek, uh, thinking about if we want to put a fence along the, the wood line there, just, you know, a little added, added security. Where, um, the piece that's not covered, where does it go to? Where can it go to the um, kids if they were to go through there? There's well, there's there's a residence on the left side of looking here on that side of the field that you can see from okay. the here and more towards this and it's, it's it's more of a wood you know wood line kind of thing. So and it's you know it's, it's not that students are are <laughs> going beyond it's just more of a protection you right. know, for us. If again it's not anything that we're concerned about. It's just the thought is you know. We have part of it fenced down along here. Is it worth doing a little bit more just with uh, um, with an open back there? Just the age we live in, I guess. So, just something to think about. Um, <laughs> um, what kind of fence do you have now? It's it's it's, it's a lane. chain link on this side here. Yeah, I know, it's probably six seven feet high, maybe. Okay. Um, so, you know, I do have in my report. Um, 
if it's anything you want us maybe to explore the cost of um, or maybe for a future topic to discuss just something that uh, Mr. Pocket and I had, had talked about. Um, Doesn't it run into where the nature trail is and out down in there? Is that what you mean? I think the gap is, fence. so the fence goes the roadside and then this length back here and then it pretty much stops mm -hmm. where, um, did you see where they built the yeah, the forts yeah, and stuff, and then in that back corner there. That's the corner that I, there's yeah. like literally a short section here. Yeah. Before you get onto the nature trail. Yeah. Okay. So it wouldn't block the trail. No. 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 no it would just I be the back there. Yeah. the short spot from like literally like that part of the playground to that back corner. Yeah. So something to think about. Um, I mean, I I think it's important to be secure. If you're going to have we have security in the front, we should have. Security offense as well. I mean, we don't know why we don't, I don't know why we don't have a whole perimeter fence. It wouldn't fence in the whole perimeter either way, though. Be, like, where's it going to end? Where'd you yeah, where'd, it, it wouldn't right, mean it someone end come on the trail area. So that's like, well, I mean, with the woods on this side, it, it wouldn't. Right. It wouldn't block. You know, fence this in. Yeah, completely, and you know anybody can walk down the driveway. Right. So it's not it's not that it's a concern. Um, it's just you know thinking about the far end of the uh, property and and um, probably helps helps when you're out there, there uh, supervising recess and when kids are out there to know that hey, mm -hmm. there's a barrier there. Even if you don't see if it's within the woods, just know like hey, like I only have to keep my eyes on the woods over here where there isn't a barrier as much as I do knowing that. Someone's going to go over a fence. Mm -hmm. Not that it is impossible, it's just another, mm -hmm. it helps with that monitoring of kids' safety. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, along the same lines of, of uh, facilities and maintenance, um, Barry, you had asked about perhaps the need for any summer additional mm -hmm. help, and traditionally, historically, I should say. Um, We've utilized some part-time help over the summer. We didn't, I don't think we did last summer, um, but in discussing some of the uh, challenges this summer with a shorter summer, um, because we're going so late in June, and also we're housing summer school again here, that perhaps some, some help, you know, whether throughout the summer or even towards the end of the summer, where we're gonna really be banging out in the building ready after summer school's over. Um, so what helpful. prompted that question is, um, it's a twofold thing. It's, there's been a lot of updates, both interior and exterior. So we, there's the gardens that obviously need attention over the summer. There's the flower gardens out front mm -hmm. that I know um, people have volunteered in the past to keep those looking nice and weeding them out. And just the overall everyday upkeep of um, running the summer school here and having the kids in the school and doing the deep cleaning um, and it is such a short summer this year so i didn't know if it was beneficial if you're um, looking to hire some part time staff that maybe working with u32 mm -hmm. for some students that could use that part-time job in the summertime and working with either Jody Emerson or somebody at U32, either they still apply at. They, they post them, you can send. So I was just that. thinking too full, that. I was we like, that. wow, that could be a really good thing. So we, for, yeah, we do yeah. that, that happens across the system, um, different people. Some so. opportunities for some high school students that could just use some part-time before fall mm -hmm. sports start. And just making sure that everything that, you know, the updates that we've done both interior and exterior that we're keeping up on them every summer and they can easily get put on the back burner because they're not like i got to get to that garden and get it weeded or i got to get to the flower, or to the vegetable gardens and make sure that that stuff's being taken care of but i don't want to lose sight of all the work that we have done mm -hmm. on those pieces every summer being taken care of mm -hmm. especially when summer school's here so there's already that group of staff that's dedicated to the summer school yeah, yeah, definitely. And I'm right on the same page with you about you know, making sure that things are cleaned thoroughly. Like I talk to Chuck all the time and the, and the custodians about you know, the cracks and crevices. Yeah. I mean, that's the stuff. But that there's only so much build. time in their day, too. That's why. Right, right. Mm -hmm. so, um, Supporting the summer help to kind of do those extra pieces. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
talked a little bit about playground, um, summer program, again, looking at my report here. Um, and just a few photos, as always, of, of some things. Uh, and again, I, I try to keep our, our Twitter feed updated, so um, I haven't posted any pictures in a while, but I try to do pictures of fun and, and cool things that are happening here at our school. Um, uh, I was trying to think what I was going to say, but um, oh, that's what it was. One of our one of our our candidates commented on the the Twitter feed on her on our web page. I mean, the picture speaks a thousand words, and and to be able to see just visually anybody visiting our site, all of the the unique and cool things that we do, um, you know, that's kind of a case in point right there. Somebody that's looking to come to our school see these great things that we're doing so um, uh, that's all I had if anybody has any questions about anything I do have um, some questions about so the playground um, fundraising um, I just want to put it out there to be mindful of what groups are fundraising for what and mm -hmm. whom and how many times they're approaching especially local businesses here mm -hmm. in Berlin um, I think some businesses have been, they've been hit up for mm. like the five, six fundraising that they did for the field trip and then also have been asked for playground fundraising money and I think the sports program, I know with basketball when they did their stuff back in February have asked for the same businesses to support. So I want to be make mindful A of how many times our, our school is approaching the same businesses okay. and maybe putting out like a plan of okay this group is going to approach these businesses and making sure that everybody is aware of who's approaching what businesses so they're not getting hit up so many times. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one piece. Or can I just add to that? Yeah, absolutely. Or that, that the, the, the number of businesses needs to expand. So, mm -hmm. I mean, so not the if, same if business. a business want to, wants to contribute to all those things, great. But I think we can't, if we keep going to just like the same four or five of them, that's not fair. Right, and have you explored grants? I mean, have you explored grants on this or on the playground? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I haven't done any of that yet. Not that I won't, but just I haven't yet. <laughs> um, the second piece with the playground thing is, um, I would recommend a, a committee when you get to that point, and I'm not saying that you're there yet, but to have. Um, maybe the PE teacher and some of those outside people that might not necessarily use it for their specific programs, but be involved with it as, I mean, and I would even include like the art and music teacher, just because there's so many different options for playground equipment now that incorporate the art and the music pieces. So I would highly encourage when the committee is formed that some of those um, allied arts teachers be involved in that. Okay. I would strongly vote for that as well for the fact that right tendency is the loudest person in the room gets most attention right so if you have that diversity there I think will be perfect make sure it's not just the pre-k we know that that's a need for us but right, right. Yeah. and I'm, I'm jumping to seven but maybe we could have the play I had it on my wondering if we have playground on the future agenda item just to keep track of it Sure. Updates from you for next month. Perfect. Okay. Is there right. any other questions for Aaron on the principal's report? None. Then we will move on. Did you have anything, sir? No. Oh, thank you for bringing thank with you. me. That's a big one. That was great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you for. Um, I actually, I like celebrating the previous things that have happened in school, but it's nice to have that stuff that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the future stuff is great. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, finance. I have to apologize. There's, um, I don't know why I didn't catch this when the packet went out, but there's not a finance report in here. Mm -hmm. So. And we probably won't have one until she closes the books out at the end. I mean, yeah, right now it wouldn't change much. Right now, right? right? I, Laura and I actually had our weekly meeting, and we're getting close to closing everything down. So. I, know I got a pink it, letter I know you'll have it for June. lunch past two accounts. I know you'll have it in June. All right. So. Perfect. Yeah. Um, executive committee. 
think we pretty much went over that. The minutes were in the packet on page 16. If there's any questions on that. The majority of it was the superintendent search update. I don't think there was anything that really was out of the norm. Um, Lori went over the accounting self-assessment at our executive committee. Mm -hmm. There's no questions on the minutes that are in there. We can move on to policy committee, which I Those brought. next three have not met policy, school quality, or negotiations. Okay, so, so no all. update on any of those. And we can move on down to, oh, there's no um, board members to appoint. No. And I think I should have caught 5.2. We don't need to do that, do we? Yes, we do. Oh, we do. So this is the folks that aren't covered by the ESP or the teacher's master agreement. Okay. So that's your principal, uh, the administrative assistant who deals and has access to personnel files, and your three custodians. So I would recommend to the board that you approve for the principal 3.1, which is in alignment for what the teacher's increase is for the non bargaining and that for the custodians and for the administrative assistant that it's in alignment with the ESP contract, which was 3.5% for the 2019-2020 school year. I missed some of it. So 3.1 for principal and what was the custodian? 3.5 for principal and administrative assistant. Custodian, okay. Um, And that's been kind of the tradition that I've done for my years here is to follow that pattern. I would like to go into a quick executive session and invite you in. Yeah. So um, do you want me to do that now or waiting to the end? Um, well, if it's going to change on what we do here, then I'd rather do that now quickly and maybe the four of us can run somewhere. Okay. I don't think we'll change that. I okay. Do, I do want to. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to go into executive session at 704. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We came out at 7.13. Would somebody like to make a motion for that recommendation? Well, I can make the motion if you can show me your piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> for the motion that we propose 3.1 for principal and the 3.5 custodian and admin. Yep. Any other discussion? If done, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And then opposed? Um, accept resignations. We have, we don't have any for you tonight. No, we just we left some of the stuff on here, and same with the, the hire. We did, as Aaron told you, we haven't finished that hiring process. So for five four, you can just put table because we will have one at our next meeting. Okay. And board orders. Um, I have them. I have them. I'll make a motion to approve the board orders in the amount of $47,826.05. Were there any questions or other discussion on that? If none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. And opposed. Future agenda items. Um, so we have playground. I had a, an, uh, an item. Yeah. Um, the students, I, I just was curious on the data of students being absent or late and how it would affect their behavior or just how it would affect things. Like this, if a student's always absent or always late, does that affect their behavior? Or I'm just curious also on the data of how many students are, I'm just curious on the data on the absence and lates okay. and how it affects things. Okay. We have a friendly IC report for her to mm -hmm. see. <laughs> I like it. Perfect. Um, you know, I should have asked to add this to the um, agenda. Um, but we will meet again, but right before. I, I would like to ha quickly have, figure out for graduation, typically a board member or two or three help hand out diplomas for graduation. Um, and it's, um, it's been a little different each year, depending on who's on the board, but typically there's at least a few members that are on the board that have graduating sixth graders, so they always like to present their diploma to their child. So we all actually we all have, have a sixth grade, sixth grade graduates. <laughs> so I would just like to maybe um, 
I guess some thought or feelings as to where people are at with wanting to do that or not. Or um, I know in the past we've always had at least two or three board members presenting the diplomas. So it's either something all three of us can do and Aaron can present the diplomas and we can just shake their hands or do something along those lines. I, I actually, I meant to send Aaron an email today, to, but I got caught up in other things, so I didn't get a chance to. Um, I, think about yeah, it? I yeah. bet that if you guys wanted to think about it and then talk with Aaron, he could help coordinate between the three yeah. of you. So it's just something yeah. to think about. Okay. I'm um, fine with, with yeah. what I'm, I'd I'm be fine happy to do. Whatever, I, I don't I'll, know what the history whatever is. Whatever you so, want to do, yeah. I will do. Yeah. So. Support. So we can, yes. um, it's important to have a passion either way. <laughs> Um, so we can just think about yeah. it and communicate through email or just figure it out um, okay. by our meeting on the, we'll have a full board meeting on the 25th of May, so we will. The, we'll have a 29th, we'll be, oh, the 29th. we'll be 29th. an SU meeting, all three of you will be there, yes. so you could. So we could chat then. You could chat then and just Do let Aaron know. I don't think you need a But we don't meeting. need an agenda item for graduation, do we? No, no, no you guys should. You, I think this that. is more about scheduling, so you yeah. could. Okay. That's why I said you could communicate to Aaron and let him know. And, um, I need to talk about to Aaron to see if, I want to make sure we have all your supports here for Thursday night that you need, so I'll talk with Aaron some more. Okay. Since I won't be here. Yeah. Can I ask another question? Can we just super high level? I apologize. This is a repeat. All of these board meetings that are happen happening <laughs> that are combined and not combined and there there are like I'm trying to make sure that I understand what mm -hmm. my responsibility is yeah. to the to our existing Berlin School Education Board. Yeah. Like for all these meetings. Yeah. So the next meeting that you would have mm -hmm. Is this Thursday because you agreed to talk with the attorney? Yep, I got that one. You got that one. Yep. So the one after that is on May 29th. Yep. But in between there, just um, so there is a vote on Tuesday the 21st. So if you haven't requested an absentee ballot, there is that vote happening at the town clerk's office. Right, we have to vote on the 21st, I guess. Yep. 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 Okay. And then. The 29th, that's okay. Very, yep. please, if I miss something, because I'm doing this from memory right now. May 29th, yep. there's an SU board meeting to interview the superintendent, interim superintendent candidate candidates. I don't know how they're doing the process. I'm staying out of it, but I just yep. know that that meeting's happening. And you need, all three of you are on the SU board. Okay. Yep. And then the next thing that I know for you, Julie, is June 17th. Okay. Yep. Which is it. a yep. carousel meeting. Yep. And then graduation would be the next thing, but it sounds like you already got that one. Yep, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So those are the things I know for you okay. that has to happen. All right. Um, I just wanted to make sure I have I that. totally I get just it. take that whole week off <laughs> from June 17th to the 21st. I'm sure it's really done. I and that doesn't considering it. Stuff. I, I know, right. Nothing June 12th. Right. There's nothing <laughs> June 12th. No. Okay. And nothing May 29th. Do I attend no, that? No, you don't need no. to attend that. Uh, okay. But I do need to talk to you about Thursday night. Okay. Thursday night, yeah. Got it. Okay, thank you. No problem. Did you have um, any updates from the town from our last meeting? Did they, have they sent anything? Um, I have not heard any. I got this one thing from the town yes. clerk. Right. And, um, I heard from Justin, but I didn't hear anything from Dana. So I have not had any official mm. updates okay. from Dana as to where they are at. Mm. Okay. Um, I'm assuming I, you guys didn't get anything. No, if I had heard something, I would have told you. Um, is there any other future agenda items other than the ones that we've stated? No, I'd love to keep hearing from Aaron on the action plan, though. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.